Sarah Soleimani, who plays Miranda. Mr. Patrick Dempsey. The director, Sharon Maguire. Yeah, come right ahead. Yeah. We're just continuously yeah, clapping here. Right, yeah, that's right, good. Right. good director Sharon Maguire. Uh, that's good. Renise, Renise Zellweger. Come. That's lovely. Mr. Colin Firth and producer Eric Fellner. Okay. Well, um, usual, the usual thing, I'm going to set a, a question to get everybody talking on the top table. And there are microphones at each side, so if you put your hand up after that, then we'll um, get the microphones to you. Um, well, we are really delighted that Bridget is back with a bang, or perhaps more accurately, two bangs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just wondered if we could have a, a comment from, from each of the original clan about the, uh, the particular pleasures of this reunion, and then from, from our, our, new, uh, our new people, our new, new members, the, the joys of joining the Jones, the Jones family. Um, and I wonder, Deborah, would you like to, to start off? Oh, God. Um, well, it's just been fantastic getting back together with, after all these years, 15 years with... Um, you know, with the very people that we started out on this journey with. So, really, it's 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 getting the old band back together and the new additions. And one of those new additions is Sarah. Hi. What was it like? <laughs> Just beyond thrilled. Just beyond thrilled to um, to join this family. I feel like when I got the call about playing Bridget's new best friend, I was like, she's my best friend already. <laughs> You know, she's been in my life for so long, and to join this clan was just a dream come true. So, yeah, thrilled. Patrick? Yeah, I'm just happy to be at the table with everybody. You know, it was a, a great call to get, uh, one that makes you slightly nervous, you know, big shoes to fill, and um, I was excited. And um, everybody was so wonderful to work with, really accommodating, and I think because so much time had gone by, Oh, that's my agent calling with my next job. I want to thank you very much for that. <laughs> Tell Mr. Spielberg I'm busy and I'll get back to him. Um, yeah, it was just a tremendous experience. And then how open and supportive everybody was and how much fun we had and how much hard work we had to do as well. But, you know, I was really grateful that Eric was uh, allowing me to race as well and made that possible. So I had the best of both worlds. And uh, it was been a tremendous uh, opportunity for me. And I'm very grateful. And, and to be here in London working is uh, special. And, and to be a part of something that is, uh, you know, so beloved with Bridget. And what a remarkable character. What a strong character to have out in the world right now, particularly. Uh, it, it's, it's good to be a part of uh, the ensemble. Thank you, Patrick. Sharon, directing um, again. Well, I think we are a big dysfunctional family now, so it was quite nice to come back to the dysfunctional family. I mean, the cast of um, actors, characters, the producers. Um, yes, we have the same old stale jokes that we use on each other and that sort of thing. So it was, it was um, exciting to get back there, you know, and then we were able to bring in some new people and torture them. And um, so, yes, it was, it was great. Renee. I'm glad you just said all that because I don't have to say anything now because you covered it all. Uh, ditto. It was a great experience. And uh, so happy to have worked with Sarah and Patrick. What a treat. Uh, it's both brought an experience across the board. Yeah. Terrific. And Colin? Yeah, I, I was just excited to work with a real life racing driver. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. This guy who's actually just back from winning a big 24 hour race in Japan. Um, yeah, there was a. I think I was. A, I was surprised. We we haven't. You know, we. I I, I missed all these people, and um, I don't think I knew how much I had until we all saw each other. You know, I think there was a funny thing when we met, and people would see that combination, and that person would look over and see those people back together again, and everyone would blush slightly. Yeah. You know, uh, so um, uh, yeah, and I think nice to have some fresh faces. I don't think it would have worked if we hadn't. You know, had. Uh, uh, the, the rather ingenious new contributors. Terrific. And Eric? Um, well, I'd really like to be completely politically incorrect and say everything that they're not saying, but um, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But the truth is that um, it's been 10 years, 11 years, 12 years? 12 years. 12 years. And um, from my point of view and from Working Title's point of view, this is one of our favorite characters, um, the Bridget Jones family. And we have spent 12 years trying to find a way to 
get a script that is good enough to persuade these incredible people to all come to work every day and do their brilliant job. And um, we were just thrilled when that finally came together um, and being able to put more of Bridget and um, Mark Less and all, all the other characters <laughs> back, back into the world. And I think you've all seen the movie. Hopefully you've liked it. Um, but we're really proud of it and really thrilled that, it, that it's out there and uh, hope that the journey is positive from here on in. Thank you. There's a gentleman in the middle row that, yeah. Uh, Rene from Budapest, uh, Hungary. I guess you've never been there. No, I haven't. We were just um, talking about it the other day. Every, everybody. I've been going, there, yeah. yeah. Um, amazing how you brought her to life in all three movies. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Thank you so much. But uh, she's such a complex character, as, as we also seen it. Uh, uh, is there anything in her personality or behavior that uh, you might envy or maybe admire her for? Oh, sure. Her authenticity. I admire it. And I love to play it. It's so much fun to play a person who's so open and awkward and uh, self-depreciating, but it, uh, embraces herself anyway. Um, yeah, I, I love that about her. And uh, she has some pretty nice dates, so a girl could envy that for sure. <laughs> so could you pass the microphone forward to the lady in front? Thank you. Hello, I'm Christy from Magazine Sade. And um, since the first movie came out, Richard Chan's movie, um, a lot of women uh, around the world started to um, use the expression Bridget moment when they did something awkward or even silly, perhaps. And I'm sure that all of these women um, had at least one, if not more, uh, these kind of Bridget moments in their life. So I would like to know when you, when was the last time when you had a, a Bridget moment in your life? <laughs> really? <laughs> About 10 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> The, the last good one that I can think about um, that, that I could share with you um, that I still ruminate about, I think it happened um, a couple of months ago. Um, on, on live television, um, I was really, really jet lagged. And I think I might have fallen asleep in the middle of giving an answer to this <laughs> reporter. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure by the look on his face that whatever I was saying made absolutely no sense at all. And I remember sitting, looking, you know, imagining, um, watching myself thinking, yeah, you're, you're still talking. You should probably wrap that up. <laughs> You should probably figure out a way to put a period on that real quick. That was a nice one. My favorite ones are always on live television. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask another question? Quickly. As well? yep. So um, uh, you've been uh, away from Hollywood for six years now, and the world has obviously changed <laughs> uh, in this time. Uh, have you changed as a person and as an actress? And if so, then how? Um, yes. Um, I hope I'm a little less boring than I might have been um, <laughs> after just 25 years of being an actress and being in that cycle of, um, of making films, which can be extraordinary. And, um, and I, you know, I learned a lot in, in with each of those experiences, but um, I wanted to learn something that had nothing to do with researching a character, and I wanted to learn some things beyond the scope of, um, you know, what you're exposed to in in, in filmmaking in Hollywood. Um, and I was craving a little normalcy. Um, I have new perspective. I worked on the other side of the camera quite a bit while I was. Um, taking a little filming hiatus. So I have, yeah, I have new perspective. Um, and uh, gratitude, a lot of gratitude, because I missed it. And to come back and begin again with this um, old extended, what did you call it? Dysfunctional family. That's the one. Um, <laughs> was, you know, a um, really nice way to, to, to begin again, I think. Mm. Mm. OK, so gentlemen at the end. Yeah. Um, Phil for People Magazine, America. Sorry? Um, uh, Phil Boucher from People Magazine in America. Um, I'm just thinking, um, you took six years out and you returned to acting because you crave the uh, creative process. Mm. Um, but yeah, so you knew what you were stepping up. You were sort of stepping back into the lion's den in some ways. Are you glad that you returned given it's not just about acting people you know, to the movie stars about? Is this something you, 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 are you glad, generally, that you stepped back into the limelight? I don't really think of it as stepping back into the limelight. Um, I, uh, you know, it's a very um, insular experience when you go to work. You only 
see your work friends pretty much, except for maybe a couple of hours at the end of every day. <laughs> and I'm spooled rotten for the friendships that I have on this set. Um, and, uh, and so it, it's more about uh, that that I think of, and the rest of it is just you know extraneous, and we share it together. So uh, it's sort of more of, of, of a friendship experience than anything else. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The gentleman in the front row. Yes. Uh, this is a bit of a competition between these two possible fathers. And if it was uh, Derek instead of Jack battling to, uh, together with Mr. Darcy for this fatherhood, how do you think he will react? And a question for all the actors. Um, you know, we see Bridget like many years after we met her, and she settled down, she's independent, very successful, in good shape. If you could pick up one character and s of your career and see how they've evolved over the last 15 years, where they've gone, uh, which one would be the most interesting one for you? So there's like five questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's take one at a time. <laughs> Let me try to remember the first one if I can. I think what's interesting about the dynamic between our characters is that there's no physical fight. That was a question that came up quite a bit. Would there be a fight, which there isn't? And it's, it's, a, it's an interesting battle of insecurities for both men. And I think each man feels insecure about the other in the sense of one has the shared history and one has no history. And that's where we started to build the conflict. Um, and I think that's what's interesting about this and how they can be the best father, whether it be their child or not, and, and, and try to play that in the nuance of that. And that, that was what was fun to explore. As far as the other part of that question is, it, it doesn't matter to this film at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, though. Now for the actors, like, pick up uh, one of your roles and from the past and see how they've evolved? I'm not yeah. quite sure I understand your question. I mean, if there's one character in your career that you've played in the to mm -hmm. pick up again, pick that up you wanted again. to carry, just continue. Just yeah. how they've changed. Would you like to revisit any character from... At this point, no. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's all about moving forward, really. You know, f and, and, and in life you move forward. You don't look back. You look back from your experiences, certainly, but I think it's about being here in the moment, and then that will inform where you go. Sarah, have you a character that you'd well, like to Well, a character I've lived with for about four years was uh, Becky in BBC's Him and Her after winning, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. And uh, she spent probably the whole time in bed eating toast, waiting to uh, be naughty with Russell Tovey, who was a boyfriend. And I think in 15 years' time, she would be doing exactly the same. <laughs> she would have got out of bed. Uh, Renee? Or... No, no, I'm, I didn't have an answer. You didn't, you didn't have an answer. You didn't want to. You've revisited. Yeah, I have. yeah, fair, fair enough. The gentleman says. I think this is a question for Renee. Um, was there an, uh, a moment or an experience that led you to feel that you need to take a break? And how did you know that it's time to come back? Um, uh, for the second part of the question, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it was a really gradual sort of. You know, I just started looking around again to see, well, start reading some things and see. Um, I, I just, I don't know, I was curious and, and I had missed it. So, um, for the first part of the question, um, I'm not really sure. I just, uh, um, I was curious about a lot of other things. Um, I'd made a lot of promises to myself in life. I'm going to try that. I'm going to. Oh, I'd love to do this. And when you make films in the cycle of making films, and I'm sure you know um, that it's continuous. Uh, when you're beginning one, you're promoting another, and they overlap. And there's not much time to uh, explore other things. And I wanted to, to, to learn something new and um, grow as a person and see if I had aptitude for these things that interest me. Um, and if not, if not now, then it would be, oh, in two more years, or three years, or 10 years, and then, you know, ultimately, just don't, don't do them. And I didn't want that to happen, so. Did you have conversations with any of your peers about these kind of subjects, or? Um, n nobody who'd walked away, probably, but f for, with friends who were still busy. really, really busy, yeah. And uh, yeah, sure, of course. Thank you. And there's a lady in the centre here, and then we'll go to the lady at the end. Thank you. I guess for the producer, 
there's uh, something going on at the end. Can we expect further development of the story? Oh, mm. good question. Um, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> good question. Well, Helen, <laughs> Helen uh, has written, a, there's another book out there which is called Mad, Mad About the Mad Boy. Mad About the Boy. Which um, picks up eight years later. She's about yeah. 50, I think, 51. F so maybe yeah. in eight years' time we can talk about it. <laughs> um, but um, there, there are other stories out there, and who knows? We haven't had Bridget's menopause yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then the oval teen years. And exactly. Like that, yeah. Bridget, the ultimatum. I mean, in, 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 in all seriousness, the thing that it is, uh, I think is really interesting about the three Bridget Jones films is that unlike James Bond, where the character gets recast at the same age, um, we, we've been able to follow a character or a series of characters um, and, and show them as they move through their lives. And I don't think any... Uh, film other than Seven Up and uh, was the one that won the Oscar? Boyhood. Boyhood, yeah. Um, which were much more kind of, um, you know, uh, specialized arty type movies um, have actually done this. And I, th I think that's why it makes Bridget a um, kind of very different uh, franchise to, to most. And yeah, why not? Why can't we follow these characters into their 50s, 60s, and 70s? But we'll have to wait and see. Thank you. If you could pass the mic to the lady at the end. Thank you. Hello, I'm Heja from Turkey. Uh, I have three different questions. One, the uh, first one is for you, Patrick. Yes. Uh, you're once again McDreamy. And <laughs> there are <laughs> lots of uh, girls who are waiting for someone like you or like Mr. Darcy. Mm -hmm. What would you advise them? And my <laughs> second question is for the ladies. Uh, the labor scene was... Um, Scary. <laughs> uh, do you think these kind of scenes uh, would make young girls um, get scared of natural birth? And Colleen, was it really hard to carry <laughs> Ronnie? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, advice to young girls looking for a Jack or a Mark? Oh, I think um, it all comes in the natural time it's supposed to meet that person you're supposed to be with. So. The less aggressive you are in looking, the more it will show up, I think. But that's a lesson in lies, a life, where you, you step back and allow something to open up and come to you. I think we really enjoyed researching the birth scene, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We, we watched loads of episodes of One Born Every Minute, which is a show about birth. And um, we all, Deborah and I, were able to... Uh, uh, you know, fill in on our own gory birth tales, which we can bore for England on. So, uh, so uh, yes, and somewhere in between that, we wanted to try and make it real, but in, in all of that reality, there's always loads of humour that, uh, you know, comes out as well. So, um, was the second part of the question whether we put people off giving birth? <laughs> yes. I don't think we've put people off giving birth. I hope we haven't, anyway. <laughs> Having, having said that, I was quite glad when I was told I was having a couple of caesareans, or, or, you know, so. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a lady who think has a question here, yep. Hi. Okay, well. I'm Ellie from Belgium. I have a question for Mr. Dempsey. Um, since you are the American of this very British um, film, I wanted to know how were there any cultural differences or things you picked up, and did Mrs. Uh, Zellweger help you? Uh, get in because when she uh, did the first film, she was the American that had to fit in. And can you do the British accent? Uh -uh. And I'll the spare rest everyone of the on that one. The <laughs> um, it's great being the American in this, in the sense I think it, it adds to it in the conflict in itself is that behavior and how one would interact. It's, it's understanding the sense of humor. Um, Every culture has its own sort of moments where you have to be adjusting. So I was coming from the racing, which is a German team, into the English and then being an American and, and trying to keep it all together. So <laughs> it was quite interesting to go back and forth into all these different worlds. Uh, and I'm grateful to have it because it made it so stimulating. And the ability to adapt to that and to understand and to be respectful of each culture and to be sensitive to it. and. The key for me was to not fall into an English accent and, and you know, become that American. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So that was the biggest trap I had to be careful of, you know, especially when I'm around uh, Renee, who was in character all the time, and of course Colin, whose diction and wit is uh, brilliant and. <laughs> so it was a, it was an absolute blast. Uh, you know, it was hard work at times, but I, I was I every now and then you could step back and go how remarkable it was to be a part of this. You know, because you feel how beloved you know, the fans are, just their connection to Bridget, and to be on this side of it for the first time was something you start to realize the weight of that responsibility. And then can you bring value to it, and will you be embraced? And, and that, was, that was fun. It's nice to have that kind of challenge. And it, just great to be here and, and a part of this group. Ladies and gentlemen, time is against us and our guests are very busy. Would you please show your appreciation for them this morning? Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice.